In today's video, I got a pretty interesting one for you. We're checking out a tool called Codux that allows you to build UI visually with production ready code. Codux is a tool that's bringing developers and designer to the same platform, which is really great. And it's an all-in-one workspace where developers and designers can collaborate at the same time. In today's video, we're gonna dive into Codux and we're gonna take a look at all the features that you need to know to get started as a designer using Codux so that you and your team can start using Codux to build React sites and web apps using their visual editor. To get started, you can go to try it out online. This is something new they just released this week and it will take you through step-by-step -step lessons or you can test it out with interactive playgrounds before you even download Codux. For this video, however, we're gonna go up to the top right and select download Codux. They have it available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So just make sure you install that and we'll swap over to Codux. So when you launch Codux for the first time, you'll see the new project screen here. You have a blank project that you can get started with very easily just by clicking there. They also have a website starter. We'll dive into this more in a minute, as well as some other templates and playgrounds down here to get you started in Codux and get really familiar with the tool and how it works. On the left, I do have a tutorial section with a tutorial project if you wanna start off with that, as well as some video tutorials, which are perfect for getting you started here in Codux. There's a number of great tutorials here on their website. So I'm gonna go back to the new project tab. And you'll notice below that we have open local project. So if you're already developing a React application, you can easily load that up here and get started visually with Codux. Of course, they do have Git integration, so you can easily clone a repository to get started working on a project like that as well. So let's dive into an actual project. So I'm gonna go over here to Website Starter and just click on that. Or prompt me to give it a name. I'll just call it Starter Project and have a path to save it to here. And then Codex conveniently lists all of the different technologies that this project currently uses. And the thing I love about Codex is when I hit Create, it automatically sets everything up for that project for you. You can see it's gonna pop up with an install window here. I just hit run. It's super easy to get started with a new project. So once you've started or opened a project, you'll see the all board screen. I like to think of boards as a visual way to showcase each component and its different variants. So if you notice on the left right now, we're under all boards. You can also search for a particular component and listed here are all the components in our current project. If I were to click to home page, you'll see we have two boards here in the parentheses. So right here we have the desktop view and then we have the mobile view, different variants of the same component. So we can edit and see what it's gonna look like on mobile while we're working here in Codux. For now let's go to the desktop view and you'll notice that we have a nice canvas here in the middle. We got these handles on the side where we can adjust the width of the browser and we can also adjust the height as well. On the left hand side, we have the elements panel and this is similar to the DOM in the browser. So we can click the pencil to kind of drill in here and start selecting each individual element. We have this text title, then we have this div paragraph, and then we also have this button here. The property panel is located over here on the right and inside of the styles tab here. This is contextual, so anything you have selected will adjust for its properties that you can adjust. So if I click the div root here, you'll see adjust to show that proper layout and we can make all of our adjustments visually from here. You can even search for a CSS property since there's several of them. So if I was looking for the corner radius of this section for whatever, I could just search that and here it is. The tab above that is the computed styles and this is similar to viewing it in the browser. If I select the button here, it'll say all of the different CSS properties we have applied to it. And a really cool thing is I can click on the pencil and it will take me directly here to the styles panel where I can edit the color of this if I wanted to. Then above that, we have the properties here and you can see all the properties we have available to this current element. And just to show you real quickly, let's actually change something. So let's select this button and then let's go to the corner radius of it. And let's lower the corner radius from the max setting to 12 pixels. So now you can see we have this 12 pixel corner radius on this button. And if I go to the home here, you can see on all of the pages, I know it's kind of small, but you can see it applied to all of those cases for that button. And if I right click on this, we can actually view the code, which will open the code drawer, which is located in the bottom left over here. So see, we have this button tag here for our button. And if I wanted to, I could come in here and let's say change the text to get started. And that will update that button. 
And one thing I really like about Codux is unlike other tools, it actually puts out readable, usable code. So if I actually open this up in VS Code, for example, so you can see we have a components folder here and we can go to the homepage and we'll just select the TypeScript. And you can see here we have the homepage layout. There's our get started button that we updated, auto updating here for us in VS Code once we apply that in Codux. And if I were to, let's say, let's just duplicate this. And we want another button that says learn more once again. And as soon as I save this here, we go back over to Codux. We've got two buttons. So you can easily work in your normal workflow just like you would in VS Code. And any changes that you make here inside of Codux will automatically be applied in Visual Studio Code. Pretty sweet. All right, so let's actually make a few more adjustments to the design so we can really get a good feel for Codux. So the first thing I wanna do is add some variables so we can have some colors used throughout our designs. If I drill in here to this design and I go all the way back down to that button we've been updating, you'll see that when we go down to the background color, which is currently set to black, we only have four variables and I wanna add some new ones. So I'm actually gonna do that in the code. So I'll swap over to Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna to go to theme.module.scss and here we're declaring our color variables and I'm gonna add a few more. So I'm gonna start with a minty, a minty green color as our main green that we're gonna be using. And then instead of just using the straight black here, we'll add a new variable. I'll call it black 900 and I'll paste in my color code. And then we'll add a slightly lighter colored gray. We'll call that black 700. And this one will be set to 3D, 3D, 3D. And we gotta remember here to save that. And once we've saved that, we can head back over to Codux. And if I click back into the fill here, you can see we have our new variables applied. So for our call to action button here in this section, let's go with a minty green for the background. And we'll need to upgrade the text for better contrast. So we'll change that from white and let's just go to the default black there. Then I'm gonna go back to the root here. And instead of this gray color, I'm gonna set this over to a dark theme. So I'm gonna use the black 900 for the background. And so now we'll need to update our text over to white to match this theme. And so I'm gonna grab the div, which is called title. And I'm gonna go down to our text color. And I'm actually gonna set the text color to white. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the div text here. Set that over to a white fill color. Then in our breadcrumbs, let's go back to the root element and let's actually grab a hold of our header here. We'll edit that. And then with that div selected, I'll go down and set a new background color on that one. And this time we're gonna go with a little bit lighter of a color. So we'll go with black 700. And of course, we'll have to update all of our links. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. And our image is a little dark, so we'll add a subtle border to this. So with that class selected, it's just the image class itself. I don't need to make a custom one. We'll go down here to border. We're gonna go to solid, one pixel, and I'm gonna set it to that 700 black variable that we created. And you can see kind of that outline there. And then we'll also adjust the corners here. So I'm just gonna search for corners and we'll go with 30 pixels. And now we've got a nice round there. And also on our navigation, let's go ahead and grab that once more. And so let's actually add some margin around this just to get it off of the edge of the browser. I think that'll look pretty cool and modern. So we'll scroll down here to margin and padding. And for margin, I'm gonna set 16 pixels all the way around. So that gives us this nice detached navigation. And then we can also round the corners while we're here. So I'll just type in corners and we'll set those to 16 pixels. And now we kind of get this white background here. So we'll simply drill in once more and I'm just gonna grab the div root and apply our color there. So we'll go with 900, match this section background. And there we have our little detached navigation. All right, so our website's looking a little bit better with those adjustments. 
Let's go ahead and see how it will look by clicking this eyeball here for the preview. And this will make this behave like it would if we were viewing it in the browser. So when I hover over links or buttons, we'll see any changes that will happen. Currently, when we hover over this button, we can't really tell that we're hovering it. So let's go back to the select mode and we'll select the button. And once we've selected our button, we can actually go to states and we can select the state that we want. We'll go with the hover state. So now we're viewing this button when it is hovered. And what we want to do is adjust the background here. I'm going to make sure it's set to our minty green, but at a lower opacity of about 70% or so there. And then we're currently viewing it with this state applied. So we can go back up here and reset back to the default state. We can go to preview. And now when I hover over this, you'll see we get that nice hover effect of our button. So let's update a little bit of the text on the site here. So I'm gonna grab the title and here in the properties, we can actually update the title from here. I'll just put build UI visually. And then for the paragraph text, let's actually change this as well. And I'm just gonna grab the paragraph text from the Codux homepage and I'll just paste that in here. Let's add a little heading up above a build UI visually, like a subheading. So we can actually add elements by going up here to elements and selecting add. And you have all kinds of basic elements, typography, forms, and you can even add components from here, which is really great. But we're gonna add a div. And inside of that div, let's add a basic text element and we'll go with a heading six. Then I'm gonna select the heading six and I'm going to add a new class to this. And with that new class added, we can actually style this. So let's drop this down to one rim. Let's set the text color to our paragraph color text with our text paragraph there. And that looks a little better. Now we can head over to the properties panel and actually select the text itself. And we can update that here. And there we go. Next, let's update this image finally here. So I'll select this one more time. We'll go to styles and I wanna add a kind of a glow to this. So we'll go down to effect shadows and we'll select the customized shadow and let's give it a color just so we can see it. I'll go with our text paragraph color, why not? And if you're familiar with using this in code, it's a little tricky to get exactly what you want without using a third party to visually update this. So I'm really glad that we can visually do this here in Codux makes this so much faster. Let's actually darken that up just a little bit. We just want a very subtle drop shadow there. That's pretty good. And so here is our final wireframe. If we go to the preview mode, you can see all the adjustments we've made to this wireframe. That's going to do it for today's video. Special thanks to Codex for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check them out with the link at the top of the description and start building UI visually with production ready code. As always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.